Okay, so let's talk about attention and consciousness. Um, so what is attention? Attention is about doing computation in a focused way. We're going to sequentially uh, focus computation on one or a few elements at a time. And uh, we realized in around 2014 that this was extremely powerful and, and was the reason why we were able to get a breakthrough in machine translation. When you, when you produce uh, uh, the next word in English, when you're trying to translate from French, say, uh, you want to really focus uh, the computation on just the right few words in, in the French sentence that are relevant to, to do the translation. So we introduced a particular form of attention called content-based soft attention, which is very convenient because you can backdrop through it, and so you can learn it. In other words, we can learn where to attend. Um, and so the way it works is the computation being done at the next level is going to use as input um, a, a selection from the previous level of computation, uh, and that selection is going to be a soft selection. So we can take a, a convex weighted combination of value vectors from the previous level, and uh, these convex weights are coming from through a softmax that um, is conditioned on uh, each of the elements. So for each of the elements, we're going to see how well they match the context to see on which one the attention should be focused. So in a way, Attention is parallel, right? We're, we're uh, considering all the possible elements in some set, and we're computing a score for each of them in order to decide on which one or which ones we're going to put attention. And there's been recent work in cognitive neuroscience showing that attention should be thought of as, a, as an internal action, right? So the way that your brain is, is attending is very similar to the way that your motor system is deciding to move your arm. And so we want to learn these attention policies. So attention has been very, very um, useful. Um, I mentioned machine translation, but essentially today's NLP systems, uh, state-of-the-art systems, uh, all rely on attention. Uh, look at the, all the work based on transformers and their variations. Uh, they're also at the heart of memory extended neural nets. Uh, we had a paper last year and more ongoing work on how attention um, uh, connected to memory can also unlock the problem of vanishing gradients. And as I'll mention, attention also allows to change neural nets from machines that are processing vectors to machines that are processing sets, and in particular sets of key value pairs. Okay, so, so let's see this picture again. Uh, we can think of attention as creating a dynamic connection between two layers. Whereas in a traditional setting, the connections are fixed. Here, we kind of pick uh, which of the inputs is going to be sent to the, the, the whatever module we're considering that uses an attention mechanism. Now, this is great. Um, but from the point of view of the receiving module, there is a problem. Uh, it gets this value, which is uh, one of those in the, sets of, uh, in the set of input elements. But it doesn't know where it's coming from, right? It's the value of what. Um, and so what we're doing in it with attention mechanisms is, in addition to the value, we have some concept of key. Uh, in other words, a kind of identifier for where the value coming, is coming from. Currently, we're using those keys to, to decide which element should get the attention. But that key is also sent to the next level. And so downstream computation can know what the value it's getting is, is, is what it is, what it's coming from. Uh, what kind of object it is, what kind of type it is. Uh, so you can think of this as creating a name for these, these objects and creating a form of indirection. And, and, and as I said, now we uh, have these systems of operating on sets. Why is it a set? Because the, the attention mechanism doesn't care of the order in which we're putting these, these elements in, in the first layer. It, it, it just you know, picks one according to how well it matches the, the, some, some kind of learned uh, policy. But uh, the information about the relative position of these elements, in, 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 say, in your brain or in a, in a neural net architecture, doesn't matter anymore. OK, now let's connect to what our friends in neuroscience and, con and cognitive science are, are, are doing. Um, in our community, the, the C word, consciousness, is still kind of taboo. But, but in their community, it's not anymore. And that's great. Um, they've made a lot of progress in understanding several aspects of consciousness. And there are a number of theories. Um, 
but many of them are related to what's called the global workspace theory, which um, originated from bars, and uh, there's a lot of uh, very good, important uh, improvements to it uh, from Stan DeHaan and collaborators. Um, and what this theory says is that what's going on with, it, with consciousness is there's a bottleneck of information. Uh, the, some, some elements uh, of, of uh, what is computed in your brain gets selected and then broadcast to the rest of the brain and influencing the rest of the brain. So um, this is related to short-term memory where the things that have been selected are uh, available and uh, conditions heavily perception and action. So it, it also gives rise naturally to the kind of uh, system two abilities that I've been talking about. All right, so how is machine learning going to do something? I mean, what's the connection with machine learning? Uh, machine learning could be used to help brain scientists better understand consciousness, but, but what we are understanding of consciousness could also help machine learning uh, develop better abilities. So first of all, uh, the work that's been done in neuroscience in general is based on fairly um, qualitative descriptions of, of these functionalities that we, we think uh, are associated with consciousness. Uh, and what machine learning can do is help us formalize in, in a way that's, you know, more mechanistic what, what these exactly means. And, and then that could feed back the, the research in, in uh, neuroscience in order to provide specific, more specific tests that could be, could be done of these theories. Um, of course, uh, for me at least, one of the motivations is also to get rid of the sort of fuzzy, fuzziness and magic that, that surrounds the word consciousness. And, and, and I think machine learning is in a good position to provide a justification for these particular forms of computations uh, in the sense of, uh, you know, why, do they, why have they evolved? What kind of computational and statistical advantage are coming with these particular forms of computations? And of course, once we understand these things, we also want them in our learning agents. So consciousness is, is closely related to language. Because the way that we know that somebody is conscious is by asking them to report what they're thinking about. So this is the, the direct way that we know about consciousness. Uh, and that means that there's a very strong link between your thoughts, that, you know, things that you're conscious of, and language. That one can be translated to the other fairly easily, although there's a loss of information when you go from your thoughts to, to language. Um, it also means that... Uh, there's a connection between system one and system two here because those high-level concepts that we communicate with language um, are anchored uh, in the system one sort of intuitive system that um, connects your brain to uh, uh, the rest of the world through, through perception and action. And, and I think that's one of the big um, uh, important direction for natural language research uh, we really want to explore things like grounded language learning where we don't just learn from texts. We learn from environments which involve perception, action, um, the, the, the perception action loop through the environment and, uh, and allow a learner not just to get sort of patterns of sequence of words, but, but also what they refer to is, is, is uh, its understanding potentially implicit of how the world works. And, and I refer you here to some work we've, we've done recently in, uh, published in the last iClear on grounded language learning, uh, something that I, that I called baby AI.